Hi, in this tutorial, we are building a full stack TypeScript application, which means that we are using a single programming language, TypeScript, on the backend and on the frontend. Specifically, on the backend, we are using Node.js, and on the frontend, we are using Vue.js version 3, the upcoming version of this UI library. The goal for this tutorial is to create yet another to do app. Contrary to other tutorials, we will not stop on the frontend. We will go deeper. I will show you how to create the backend for that application, how to create tables, how to design the database, and then how to do everything in between the configuration, the integration, and deployment. Finally, we are using Kretis, this programming environment which helps us to wrap everything into a nice package so that we can focus on creating the actual features of our application and not waste countless hours on configuring everything. So last time we talked about PostgreSQL and since that time I changed a lot of things in Kretis to make it simpler, even simpler to use. Today in this episode we will go over those, these changes. But remember if you are creating a new application, an application from scratch, those changes are automatically included so you don't have to worry about that. But because we created this app before, we need to now adjust it. Let's go over those few changes and let's discuss how they impact the overall creation of web application in TypeScript using uh, Kretis. So the first thing I changed is that I stopped using NPM and I switched to this another packer, package manager called PNPM. I decided to switch to PNPM because it has two important features. The first one is speed. It's much faster than uh, NPM. And the second one is disk efficient because they use this feature of Unix systems called hard links. In a nutshell, it's about reusing the same space for files. Mm -hmm. So if you have the same library stored somewhere on disk, you can reuse that space in different projects and PNPM does this automatically for you, which in practice it means that if you're installing the same libraries over and over and over again with NPM, you are, you know, installing them separately in a directory. As you have more projects, it's, um, it's more files on your disk and with PNPM, it's just a reference to, to a file which is stored in a single place. And overall, PNPM seems nicer uh, when you are using it. It's difficult to give some objective uh, reasons for that, but it seems well made in contrast to NPM, which always seems a little bit fragile. And let's see how we can adapt our current application, our old application. So you need to go to a file called tasks, which is located in .vs code directory. And here there are two places that we need to adjust. The first one is installing. So instead of using NPM, we are using PNPM. And here for updating, this is built in into PNPM. So we don't need another tool. And we can just say up and that's enough for PNPM. So now you need to install PNPM and you have to do it using NPM, but you're doing, doing it once because it's a global installation. So you need to perform NPM global pnpm i already have this installed and then you can start using it let's first install the dependencies so i can remove the old node modules and now i can use Kretis install and this will be using pnpm as you can see pnpm tells me that it's reusing already installed libraries because they are in one location on my computer and they are just references referenced for this specific project. So most of them are reused. Few of them are being installed, either new versions of or the ones that haven't existed in my central store. So now PNPM tells us that we have new versions. So the previous episode I recorded with Kretis 65, but now it's 69. So we need to update that. So let's press Ctrl T again, and now let's use Kretis update. So we update those dependencies. And it's the same. PNPM analyzes the dependencies and checks if can reuse them. And it's done. So another thing 
I changed in Cretus is that you don't have to worry about installing databases like PostgreSQL. It's automatically taken care of. And in order to do that, once you install Cretus, you need to install um, the Nix package manager. So in, in the future, I will be adding some uh, plugins and extensions to P PostgreSQL. And instead of you know describing how I do it, it's just a low level configuration. By providing you a recipe in Nix, it can be automatically applied to your setup. So you don't have to worry about that. I will just take care of that. And then you can just start your application and it will work the same way on my computer and on your, your computer. The Nix package manager allows us to somehow synchronize the dependencies and the configuration between different com computers. And it goes the same way for the development and for the production. When you are deploying and if you are using the Nix package manager, and then there is also Nix operating system, the same idea applies. So it's much easier doing this way. So now if you're installing Kretos, you just need to use, you need to install the Nix package manager before, and then everything is, from that point, everything is taken care of by Kretos and you don't have to worry about installation. And behind the scenes, the Nix package manager installs PostgreSQL for you. It creates database and sets the proper permissions. So this way, the thing I told you in the previous episode are no longer needed for you to know because now it's being done automatically. You don't have to you know, uh, worry about creating the database. Kretis does this for you so you can create your app. And in order to do that, we need to add one file to this directory. So in the root, I need to create a file called default nix. And once again, if you're creating a new project with the recent version of Kretis, this will be automatically created for you. So you don't have to do uh, any of that. And here is the, the content of, of the recipe we need for a Kretis application. So if you're interested, I encourage you to check Nix and see uh, what it means, but it's, it's just a detail. You don't need to know that for creating applications in TypeScript. It's just a detail. So on top of uh, default Nix, we need another, yet another file, which is in root as well, called nfrc.nfrc. And in this file, we need just a one line, use Nix. And the same goes for this file. If you're creating a new project with Kretis, it's automatically created. And the last thing is that I need to go out of the directory and go in into the project directory. And because I already have that, had that set up, you would need to use a, a command called dir env allow. So it sets the environment for Nix. And now we can finally try starting the app. So if I do Kretis start, so there is a problem, but I see that we are still using the old version here. Okay, so it seems that PNPM doesn't update the uh, packages in package.json and only updates them in the, uh, in the log file. So in order to update our dependencies, so if I open package.json, I'm, I'm still at the Kretis 65. PNPM update through Kretis update doesn't work. And we will use the NCU package, which is already installed by default, which is npm check updates. And now it updated the dependencies. And now if I do Kratis install, once again, it should uh, pick up those updates. It seems it works. So let's start the app. So we have a few errors. And the problem is that I changed the config of the routes in the new version. So I will discuss this in another episode. But for now, you need to go to config server routes and just remove all routes here because we don't really use them. And this needs to be an array now. And then in uh, features in controllers, we I simplified a little bit the syntax. So instead of using export equals browse, which is not a very common construct in TypeScript. You can just use export. So here and in task browse the same. You can do it like that. And now 
it should work. So if you refresh the app, so there's a problem with tsconfig and clients. So let's see that. Okay, so there is a comma here. And if we refresh it, it works. So it was a little bit cumbersome, but we needed to do that because Kratos evolves and we want to evolve with our app. So once again, those changes are now automatically applied when you are creating a new application. And from now on, we can focus on adding new features. So in the next video, I will discuss once again the integration with Postgres and how we can simplify what we already uh, did in that episode. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.